What's up guys, Tim Little, welcome back to Tactical Bass. In today's video, we are going in depth with top water frogs. Frog fishing, we're covering the different types of baits, different categories of frogs, the right gear. We're covering all of it. Let's go. I absolutely love frog fishing. Now that we're getting into summertime, June, around the country, everything is, is warming up. That vegetation is, is growing like crazy. The fish are in that post-spawn uh, feeding up mode. And it is a great time to get in the very backs of your creeks, the very backs of your pockets, and throw some kind of topwater frog. You guys can see right here, here's my, my boat box of frogs. I went down deep in that rabbit hole. So we got all different types of frogs, walking frogs, popping frogs, um, frogs you just reel with clackers and tails and um, all sorts of stuff. So we're gonna cover all of it. The point of this video is to cover the different types of frogs from entry level frog fishermen all the way to advanced. Got some tips for you, some tricks to help you guys uh, be a little different and catch more frogfish this season. So I like to break uh, my frogs into about five different categories. Now that might seem like a lot, but we got your traditional, just everyday walking frog. We have your open water frogs. Got your popping frogs. and your mat frogs, you know, frogs with rattles, frogs where I've added weights, bigger presentations, bigger bigger profiles to fish those mats. So that is my five categories of frogs. That's how I kind of simplify it in my mind. So today we're gonna go through each of the categories, got a couple different baits in each category. We'll talk about co colors, we'll talk about gear, we'll talk about actually how to walk them. Uh, hopefully I can show you out here, not too much chop on the water, but uh, should be a good in-depth frog fishing video. So starting off, what is a frog? This is a hollow belly or hollow body frog. It's a soft plastic or rubber frog, big old gaff of a hook on there, and typically you're throwing it on straight braid, uh, a shorter but powerful rod. This is a seven foot three, extra heavy, and then some kind of fast reel with straight braid. Like I said, 65 pound braid. Um, but you are power fishing. You were literally throwing this in the thickest grass, the thickest cover you can, where those fish are gonna be back in and hiding after the spawn. So, uh, to start, it's really important to walk a frog. Now, if you are a beginner fisherman and you want something that you can just throw out there and reel back, we're, we got you covered in today's video as well. But we're gonna start by talking about just the basic frog and how to walk it. So this is actually the new Bobby's Perfect Frog from Snag Proof, completely redone last year. Really, really like this frog. Look at that big old gaff on there. Uh, it's kind of angled up a little bit. So um, real good hook penetration. But uh, again, 7.3 extra heavy, 65 pound test braid. You're throwing it in the thickest stuff. And then you're just gonna twitch, 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 twitch. Show you guys real quick. Twitch, 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 twitch. You want this frog going side to side, just like you're walking your traditional walking, like your spook or your vixen, something like that. Twitch, 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 twitch. You pause it, let it sit there on your shade lines, the little openings in the grass mats. But uh, that is how you walk a frog. Typically, if you're having an issue walking the frog, try hitting it a little softer with your rod tip. Twitch, 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 twitch. That thing's going side to side. So now that we covered that basic, basic tip, you know, this isn't something that you're just gonna cast out and reel back. You know, we do have that category coming up. I'm gonna talk about it. But look how weedless this frog is. I can literally run my finger right over the back of that hook. It's, it's literally formed around that back. But when that bass eats it, and you jack them, set the hook, that's gonna give them a whole mouthful of hooks. But um, like I said, this is probably one of my most 
exciting ways to catch them. Top water frog fishing, power on power. When you pull that fish out of a big grass mat or it comes airborne and just sharks your frog and you lay into them, it is so much fun. It doesn't matter if it's a two pounder or a 10 pounder, frog fishing is a blast. So I have uh, four, cat, uh, four frogs in this category, uh, depending on um, colors and, and body shapes and stuff. We're gonna cover these four real quick because these will cover your frog fishing adventures uh, this summer. Uh, you can probably get by with just one or two of these frogs, but let's talk about, I already talked about the bobbies, that new perfect frog, that thing is awesome. Let's talk about this guy. This one's retired. I actually pulled this one off my shelf. Um, this is the River to Sea Bullywa 2. Uh, I want you guys to look at this frog. <laughs> look at the teeth marks. Just looks like this thing has been through it. Um, you can see I trimmed the legs a little bit shorter there. That keeps those fish from short striking, eating the legs, not the, not the hooks. But look at this frog. Uh, I brought this out just because uh, we love this frog. Like I said, that's that Bullywa 2 and that is in a color that Matt and I designed that is called Little Allen. Uh, chartreuse belly, brown top. We're gonna talk about colors later on in this video, but um, that has always been, for the last, I don't know, five or six years, our number one frog. It is super easy to walk because it has this keel right here. So that's gonna stay true in the water, and as you're going back and forth, it's gonna turn left and right, left and right, uh, but it's always gonna sit straight up in the water versus something like the bobbies. See, it's got more flat of a belly. This is a great open water frog as well. This is not a frog that you're gonna, you can do it, but you're not gonna want to target real thick, heavy vegetation because with that keel, that frog wants to rotate left or right, and then it exposes that hook point to the grass. But if you're fishing sparse grass, you're fishing over, over, um, grass that's you know just an inch or two below the surface and you're just walking this thing like you would a spook you know somewhere where you can't throw a treble hook bait uh, this is money that is our favorite open water frog and then that that's that uh, that bobby's is right up there as well two other ones for you real quick these are great frogs um the spro the the bronze eye frog it's in that leopard color um, i've had a lot of success with this specific frog post spawn you know i don't know if it's because it looks like fry or looks like baby bass or something but um had a lot of success with this specific color especially in the poppin frog but that's that spro bonsai frog you can see it's kind of a slender belly a little bit longer so it's easier to get that thing walking and this guy right here this is the scum frog you know we talked about this one a lot last year this is by far the softest frog out of the package that I have ever thrown, super soft. Now, why is that important? You know, sometimes these fish just absolutely grenade a frog, right? You reel down and you hit them hard and the fight is on. Sometimes they just come up and your frog just goes under. The big fish, a lot of times just come up and just suck that frog in. Your frog disappears, you reel down, you jack them. You don't want a bunch of plastic or rubber in the way of your hooks. You need that good hook penetration to get to the roof of the mouth, the top lip, the roof of the mouth. So having a soft frog is really, really important. The softer the frog, the easier it is to get a good hook set, good hook penetration into that fish and increases your chances to get that fish to the shore or in the boat. But there it is, guys, right there. That is the all-purpose frog, the bobbies. The, the uh, Bullywa 2, that Spro, and then the, uh, the Scum Frog. Those are all winners. That's it. If you are a beginner fisherman and you are getting into frog fishing, get one of those. Uh, if you are a fisherman that's kind of branching out and going down into the rabbit hole of frog fishing, I have you covered as well. The next category of frog I'm gonna talk about is gonna be the poppin' frog. Got one right here for you. <laughs> this one's beat up too. I want you to look at the, look at the cheeks on this guy. 
This is the Jackal Gavacho. Now you can see the difference. Poppin' Frog is literally a weedless popper. Look at the two differences of these frogs. Cupped face, not cup face. The benefit to having a cup face is just that. It's a popping frog, so you're not covering a lot of distance. You know, you're literally throwing this thing out to that key area, that dock piling, that lay down, the edge of the grass line, and you can walk this just like you would a normal frog, but you can also pop it and get that bloop, bloop, let it sit. This is really good post-spawn for those fry garters. You know, if you see a ball of fry, a lot of times you'll see them flickering on the surface, throw this thing right in the middle of it, give it a couple pops and hold on. But uh, this is the uh, Gavacho. It's a really easy frog to walk. Again, twitch, 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 just going side to side. Kill it, pop it, bloop, bloop. Walk, 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 walk. The benefit of throwing the poppin' frog, besides the sound, is actually with this cupped face, you are limiting the amount of distance you're covering to the boat or to you on shore. Uh, with this cup face, when you pop it, it gets that water resistance. It doesn't cover much distance to you. So you can stay in that strike zone, that good area longer. Uh, and it's just something different. A lot of guys throw traditional frogs. If you can throw a frog in that same location that sounds different, walks different, um, acts different, that is a must. Um, We'll talk about gear here shortly, but uh, that poppin' frog, the Spro poppin' frog, and then last but not least, I got another Gavacho here for you. That's a white one. See it a little bit better. The Big Gabbit. This is a Mega Bass frog. Now this again is gonna be more of your open water frog. Again, it's a really large profile compared to that smaller Gavacho. I'm holding one in my hand right here. but it has that cupped face as well. So this is gonna be, the benefit of this frog is you can bomb it a long way. So where you would throw your spook or your whopper plopper just outside that grass line, that, that sparse vegetation, throw this right inside that line in that vegetation and get walking this thing. Again, just like all Mega Bass products, great hooks, great colors, um, but that is a great poppin' frog. So again, trying to give you guys just a couple in each category to try and um, limit. When you go shopping for frogs, literally there could be a wall of hollow body frogs. There could be pages as you're scrolling, uh, but these are all fish, are all baits that we have a ton of confidence in. So we're trying to simplify it for you. But uh, that Gavacho is a winner. Same thing with that big Gabbit. And then that Spro popping frog. The Spro, I actually don't have one. I need to order some more. Um, I threw them a lot here last year. You know, last year, the year prior, um, we had to downsize our frog uh, baits quite a bit. You know, the bass were really keying in on small bait fish. And so we went with that Gavacho. We went with smaller frogs, that smaller Spro popping frog. They actually just came out with an even smaller one made for fishing on a spinning rod. I'll link that stuff down below in the video description. But um, there's so many cool frogs on the market and they all sound different. They all walk different. There are some that are easier to walk, some that are harder to walk. Um, but we're trying to simplify it for you. And then based on which category of frog you want, we'll give you one or two or three uh, in that category. So talking about downsizing, um, these guys right here. Hands down, my number one finesse frog is this little guy right here. This is the Kayara. It just really, it's a real good profile. Let me show you compared to a uh, standard size frog. See the difference? A little bit smaller, real good bait fish profile and color. But the last couple of years, when those fish have been really keying in on that small bait, we've had to downsize our frogs. Even the little bully wall, the little 55, it's got more of a keel on there. Just a smaller presentation, just seemed to be kind of match the hatch, just kind of seemed to be what those fish really wanted. We would get the occasional blow up on the bigger frogs, but we caught a lot more fish on the little finesse frogs. 
Now with the finesse frog, you don't need that 7.3 extra heavy. You can get away with your uh, heavier jig rod, um, you know, something that you can put 30 to 50 pound braid on. This is actually 50 pound braid. Um, you know, you don't need that, that broomstick to get those fish out because out of the cover because a lot of those finessier frogs have lighter wire hooks and you don't want to bend them out. So we talked about your traditional frog. We talked about your, um, what did we talk? We talked about your popping frogs and your finesse frogs. Let's talk about um, open water frogs. I don't know if I have one time. Yeah, I do. This guy right here. This is the new, it's a Spro blade frog. So it still has the same body as your traditional Spro bronze eye frog, um, but it has the metal feet. Now the benefit to something like this, and I got a couple different ones for you. You fire it out there, you can walk it, twitch, 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 get that thing going back and forth. I could hear the clanking from here. Clank, 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 clank. That's those metal feet back there slapping each other. Or you can just slowly retrieve it. Real, 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 real. Get to an open spot in the mat, pause. Twitch, 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 twitch. It's just adding a little bit of different sound, a little bit of different action and some flash the cool thing about this category of frog, anybody can do it. You can throw it on a heavy spinning rod uh, because you don't have to do anything with the rod tip if you don't want to. You just fire this thing out there and just reel it back. Nothing special and they eat it. Now I will say, typically when I'm throwing a traditional frog, twitch, 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 and they eat it, I'm hitting them as fast and as hard as I can. If I'm throwing, this applies to horny toads and, and, and mo quick moving frogs. If I'm reeling it and they eat it, I'm gonna reel down. A lot of times I'm holding my rod tip up about, I don't know, I don't know what you'd call that, maybe two o'clock or so, to keep that line off of the water in front of that frog. I don't want there to be three or four feet of line in front of that frog as I'm reeling it through. I want that line off the water. So I'm keeping my rod tip up just a little bit and they eat it, I'm gonna drop my rod tip, reel down, and then set up, set up on them. Um, that just gives them a little split second of time to really get that frog uh, down in their mouth. When you start using these types of frogs, you miss a lot more of your bites. A Couple other baits that are great in this category. So much fun to uh, fish. So just like that Spro, here's the Tekel. I have two versions of Tekel for you. This one is literally like a weedless whopper plopper. It has a big interchangeable boot. This is unscrews off this centering pin, and this just spins. Plop, 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 plop. You literally throw it where you would throw your whopper plopper, but now you can't because the grass has come up. That is a really fun one to fish. Again, another one by Tekel, same type of thing, except for it's got that plastic rattle just a little bit different sound, a little bit of action, adding that flash. And then another one by Spro. This is their uh, flapping frog with that really uh, durable uh, material. Again, the benefit of throwing a frog like this versus a horny toad, you pause this guy, it's gonna sit there. You pause a horny toad or some other favorite toad bait you might be throwing, it's gonna sink. So um, had a lot of success with these types of frogs. Again, it's just all about being a little bit different giving them a little bit quicker presentation, a little bit slower to presentation, depending on the day, depending on the sunlight, the low light, depending on what's going on. That's why we have so many different frogs. Now, the last category of frog I wanna talk about before we talk about gear real quick is gonna be your mat frog. You know, when we start talking about mats, we're talking about thick, heavy vegetation, you know, grass that you could flip your jig on, it just sits on top. You know, a lot of times you get this stuff called cheese, kind of yellow looking grass. Uh, and you'll see, if you're fishing like Gunnersville or Chick, or you're on a good frog fishing lake, you will literally see lines in the cheese from previous casts that other anglers have made. Uh, so you can see blow up holes. Uh, there's a lot to learn from looking at the surface, but Maybe that's a more uh, on the water type of, of deal, but um, fishing those mats. 
Again, when you're fishing the mat, you wanna work the edges first, fish around the edges, fish kind of slice the pie, and then fish the middle. And then if you wanna follow up, then you can go and, and flip and punch it. But uh, frog fishing, my two favorite mat frogs. One's gonna be this river sea. This is the fat mat daddy frog. You can see it's a real flat faced frog. Hardly no, any keel at all. Again, this is for landing on top of the mat. Uh, the difference with mat fishing, fish are up underneath it, kind of like a, a blanket to them, uh, less visibility. So you need a heavier frog to create more of a disturbance on the surface, something that kind of pushes that mat down to kind of let those fish know uh, that there is prey above them. So a little bit heavier and has a rattle. Works great. Again, I shorten up the, the legs just because I don't need a real long leg down there for that fish to target the leg and, and miss the hooks. But that guy right there, and then the Spro King Daddy. You can see this is a giant size frog. The cool thing about this frog, get a normal size frog in here to show you. A lot smaller, or a lot larger profile than your traditional 65 size frog. You, think you can cast this thing a mile. Uh, two tricks for you. You can listen to this. I took a 3 16 ounce drop shot weight and I stick it in right here. Put it right in the belly where that hook comes out. This adds a little bit of weight. Two bonuses, two, two benefits from doing that. One, casting. I could send this thing across the cove if I wanted to. You can bomb it with adding that extra weight. Two, more importantly, it sits deeper, heavier in the water. So it's gonna create more of a depression in that mat. Uh, the fish are gonna be able to find it a lot easier. And then I guess three, adds a little bit of sound. Uh, on that note, if you're looking to add sound to any of your frogs, Go to your local tackle shop or order them online, get your jig rattle. Same thing, just like a, a, a little cylinder weight, drop shot weight, you can slide that jig rattle into the belly of your frog and a lot like the Fat Mat Daddy, just adding a little bit of sound to that frog lets those fish really key in on that frog, especially on the mats. You know, out on the sparse grass, on those grass lines, you don't need as much sound because you're gonna be able to see a lot better, but it never hurts to add, I won't say never, play around with it because sometimes adding brighter colors or louder sound can kind of deter the bites or, or um, hurt you. But, um, but that guy right there, that Spro King Daddy, again, larger frog, um, launched a mile, and the fish absolutely destroy it. Now with that said, kind of talked about gear already, but um, let's go through this real quick. I have fished a lot of frog rods on the market, and just like we've said in the last, I don't know, three or four years, the X, X Bride, the 7.3 extra heavy, um, paired with a metanium. This is actually an XG, so eight to one, 65 pound braid. You can straight send it, and when they eat it, this rod is so much fun to fish. It's light, it's sensitive, and it is strong. Um, that X Bride, just blown away. Uh, it should be a higher price point, I believe. But um, if I could fish any combination for frog fishing, that is what it would be. Now, with that said, there's other great rods on the market too. Uh, different budgets, we'll link down below in our video description, uh, some budget combos. Another great combo that I really like that doesn't break the bank, that's that Bass X. It's a 7.4 Heavy. So uh, it's not an extra heavy, but it's a heavy, still enough backbone, still enough power to get those fish out. And I paired that up with an XL SLX XT. Again, another reel you can send it with, but it's just built. Woo. It's just built 
that's dry braid, just built to uh, withstand heavy, heavy um, force. You know, a lot of these reels I'm recommending are seven or eight to one. Don't be afraid of the gear ratio. You know, these new reels these days have a, still have a ton of torque. So if you need to really get that fish out of the cover, they will still do it. Let's try that again. Better with wet braid. But again, that Bass X 7.4 Heavy, I'll link it uh, down below. And then that XT has a, a bigger handle and just enough backbone to get that fish out of the cover. And you can see, you can send these frogs with the, these combos. You don't necessarily want to go get a broomstick of a rod because you can't cast it. It won't have a soft enough tip to twitch, 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 get that frog rock walking. So you want to be very specific with your frog rods if you're going out to buy one. If you're trying to use one of your rods that you already own, try using a shorter jig rod. For a frog rod, I typically like a 7.3 or a 7.4. You know, I don't want it 7.6. I don't want it long enough that when I'm trying to walk the frog, my rod tip is just slapping the water. I don't want that. So I like that seven foot two, three or four, a little bit shorter, twitch, 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 get that rod tip low to the ground, low to the water, um, and you're not slapping it. So if you have a shorter jig rod, something with soft enough tip to, to uh, get that frog going side to side, but a strong enough backbone that when you lay into them, that rod loads up and you have them pegged. Um, so that is gear. Talked about rods. Line, I actually run three different types of braided line. Um, keep it simple. Just go out and get some 65 pound. Um, I like the, the uh, Power Pro, the Max Quattro. It's a little bit thinner diameter. Uh, that works great. That's my number one braid. If I am fishing around a lot of like, let's say, uh, toolies or lily pads, something that has a, a bigger base, a root base in the water, that's when I will go with something like the Sunline, the FX2. It's more of a abrasive braid, if that makes sense. It's not nearly as smooth. And when you hit those fish and they go down into it and you're wrenching on them, that that more abrasive braid kind of acts like a, a saw and cuts through those lily pad roots and stuff. So I had a lot better luck getting fish out, big fish out with that braid in thick grass. And then if I'm fishing open water um, and don't really need that abrasion or that rough feeling braid, I really like, this is that 131 braid by uh, Suffix. Super smooth, goes on the reel nicely, comes off nicely, it's quiet. And um, the biggest benefit to having smooth braid, those of you guys that have fished braid for a long time, you're gonna totally relate to this. This time of the year, you start getting a lot of debris on the water, you know those little white puff balls? And when you're fishing a braid that has a lot of, uh, it's rough braid, that stuff just seems like a magnet. It just sticks to it. So you're reeling your frog in and you're, all your guides are getting clogged up with it. Uh, it's just a pain. So that smooth braid, it's a lot easier to keep clean, a lot easier to manage when you get that floating stuff on the water. You know, it could be cheese, it could be whatever, but that white cottony stuff, I don't even know what it is. If you guys know what it is, leave a comment down below in the comment section. But that stuff can be such a pain to deal with um, especially when you're on a good frog bite and you go to cast and your reel just blows up because you know four guides up is loaded with that stuff and just just messes up your entire cast um, it could be a pain to deal with but guys there it is frog fishing in depth um, it's a great time to get out on the water typically these time this time of year Right off the bat, early morning, late evening, the fish are gonna be out, right? Low light conditions are gonna be out traveling around, searching, hunting. Uh, that's when you can go with your open water frogs, your tackle, um, you know, the other stuff that I talked about, the other frogs I talked about, that new spro, plop, 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 clink, 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 just covering a lot of water. Cast, chucking and winding. Follow that grass line. You know, you see an isolated grass patch, hit it, go right around the sides, go over the top. You know, move around, move quickly. But once that sun gets up, 
starts getting hot. You have real uh, sharp shade lines, grass lines. That's when those fish are gonna get up in that stuff. That's where you have to switch to those heavier frogs, you know, your mat frogs, and really work that thing a little bit slower. Twitch, 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 pause. Twitch, 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 pause. As you come to the edge of the grass, twitch, 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 get a little bit quicker like it's trying to, to uh, get away from that grass line. But with that sun up, it congregates those fish into the obvious spots. Now your shoreline, you can see those shade points, you can see the shade pockets, you can see the, the grass mat. Those fish are gonna go up underneath it. So it actually congregates those fish and makes it easier to locate. But uh, guys, I will link everything down below in the video description. Favorite frogs, colors. Almost forgot about colors. I keep it extremely uh, simple on colors. If you guys looked at this box or looked at the frogs that I held up, you will notice three or four colors, main colors. So here we go. I'm gonna keep this extremely simple for you. If the fish are aggressive, I'm covering a lot of water. I'm starting off with some kind of chartreuse. Doesn't matter if it's an entire chartreuse frog. Uh, I really like a chartreuse with some contrast. You know, when that, when that frog's going side to side, it's rolling a little bit, so it's, it's showing it's bright. They can see it. Um, I'm going with chartreuse. On that same note, white. Doesn't matter what the top is. There is that spro, uh, I can't remember the color. Again, I'll link it down below, but it's white and black. So it kind of <laughs> gives you that, the best of bo both worlds, but chartreuse and white. That's the two colors that I'm starting off with. If I feel that the fish are finicky or they are pressured or just, just not, it's not feeling right, I go black. Doesn't matter what the top is. It's all about the belly. For the most part, I go black. And I will say typically through the years, I've caught the bigger fish on black. I have caught some really big ones on white and chartreuse, but uh, consistently bigger fish eat black. I don't know if that's because it's just uh, less intrusive or just more natural. I don't know what it is, but uh, if you feel like your fish are heavily pressured or they've seen a bunch of different frogs, heard a bunch of different frogs, different colors, try going black. And then last but not least, go natural, some kind of ghost pattern, either a shad, bait fish color, bluegill, something like that. You might even have to downsize, like I said, with that Kiara, Kiara, Kiara however, however you pronounce it, but uh, go with a smaller profile or go with a more natural profile. So keep it really, really simple. Chartreuse, white, black, and ghost or natural. And that is it. So. Guys, I'll link all this stuff down below in the video description. I know that I covered a ton of it. I'll link my favorite rods, different price points, different braids. Um, but frog fishing, it is so much fun. Again, it is hot out, but power on power. Seeing those fish blow up through the mat, seeing those fish come out of the water and just shark your topwater bait. And then you hit them and you're just, it is so much fun. If you guys haven't tried frog fishing, definitely give it a try because right now, all the way through fall, is going to be lights out top water fishing and more importantly, heavy vegetation frog fishing. Guys, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to the channel. We are so close to that half a million subscriber uh, number, so can't thank you guys enough. We appreciate all the support. We can't do this without you guys. But um, like I said, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you on the next video.